You can view the miners page as a steering wheel for your operation. So this is generally where you'll come to see your inventory of all the equipment that you have, the health of each one of those machines, and this is where you're also going to be performing actions against those miners. So you can see on this table, I can see the name of each miner. For this operation, we've named the miners to have IP address and also MAC address with them. The name column and the name attribute associated with each miner is totally customizable and it doesn't actually it's, when you change the name of the device, it doesn't reconfigure the device. It's just for your own record keeping. The status column, I can see the health of each miner. An important note is that the columns are also sortable. So for, my, for, the, for this demo, maybe I don't care about the miners that are healthy. Maybe I care more about the miners that need some attention. So I'm going to go ahead and sort the status column. Now I can see the miners that actually need attention at the top. So I'm sorted by failures first. So I can see this miner right here. Looks like it has some failing ASIC chips. So maybe somebody, I would want to send a technician out. Maybe we get the boards repaired. I can see the next one has been offline for at least two days. Looks like it actually last updated in this system uh, a little over a year ago. I can see a little further down. Looks like this miner is underperforming a little bit. So it's probably an S19. I would be expecting it to hash around 105 terahash. Looks like it's down about a third. Coincidentally, it's also missing a hash board, so that would explain why it's underperforming. I can see when the machine's last updated. I can see when where miners are located, their IP address and MAC address. So just uh, just a minute ago, I was trying to guess where I think this machine should be performing because I can see that it's underperforming. Maybe it would be helpful if I could actually see the the, the miner type, the model of it, right next to it. So it kind of help me figure out where this machine should be. I can go top right and click on the gear and I can add totally custom columns to this table. So to help me out, I'm going to add the miner type. That will show me the model. Maybe I also have an interest in seeing if it's possibly a firmware related issue. So I'll go ahead and add the firmware column also. I'll hit save. And now to the right, I can see the miner type. So I know that it's a what's miner M31S. I can also see the firmware version. So this miner is running a 2022 February version. So I'd expect this miner to be closer to 100 terahash. Looks like we're currently at about 67 terahash, so we're missing a hash board. You can perform actions against your miners as well. So if I click on the actions column on the right side, let's say I want to maybe go ahead and do some firmware upgrades as an example against some S19s. I'll click filter top right. Important note, every page in Foreman is filterable. So if you add a filter to this page, filtering will also apply to every other page that you're viewing. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's go ahead and look at just my S19s. I'm going to do some firmware upgrades. I'll apply a filter. I'm going to look at my S19s. Now I can click on the Actions button on the right, and I can do firmware upgrades. I can also do pool changes. I can reboot miners. I can fetch kernel logs. So if I actually wanted to pull the raw log off of the machine and bring it back to the central dashboard to look at it and kind of do a deeper analysis, I can do that. I can factory reset, so that would bring the miner back to the way that it was right out of the box. Power mode, very important if you're curtailing, so put the miner to sleep and wake it back up. Firmware upgrading, so if I want to upgrade the firmware on the miner, bring it to a newer software version, we'll go ahead and click that one for now. I can pick what firmware I want to provide. And now if I hit apply, that will get the miner will automatically upgrade within a minute. Other actions that you can do, change passwords. Uh, push out static IP addresses. So if I wanted to make the mi miners always request the same I request the same IP address on the network, I can do that. Blinking LEDs is kind of neat. So we'll go ahead and kind of go through an exercise on how to maybe find problem miners with blinking LEDs in a second. The actions drop down on the right shows you the operations you can perform against that miner. And this list may change based on what's supported. So for an ant miner, we're very feature rich. So you'll see a ton of options here. You'll generally see the same types of actions available for every main large manufacturer. We'll go through how to find miners that maybe have missing hash boards. So back to the filtering, I'm going to go ahead and click the filter top right. I'm going to find miners that have a status of missing hash board. With that filter applied, I can see there's 48 miners missing hash boards here. Rather than clicking actions and blink LEDs on each miner, I can also do operations against those miners in bulk. So I'll click bulk edit. I'll check the top checkbox. And now I'll click edit. So now I'm going to mass edit all of these machines. 
some of these actions in here should look very similar. It's the same actions that you'll see on the right in that actions drop down. But the thing to remember is I'm doing it against every miner that I have selected right now. So I could go ahead and select blink LEDs. We'll enter in 20 minutes. So now every single miner that's missing a hashboard will have its LEDs on the front of it flash for the next 20 minutes. So now I could send my operators across the site. They look for the flashing lights and those are the miners that they go ahead and take off the shelf. Another neat aspect of Foreman is we give you some variables that you can use to bring into miner configurations. Historically, most sites configure their miners to leverage the IP address of the machine in the worker name. So there's two concepts there, the left side of the dot, which is kind of like a, like a bank account number, your account number, where the money's gonna go, uh, that revenue you're mining. The right side of the dot is the unique identifier that's associated with that machine. A lot of people used to put IP addresses in there, but the problem with an IP address is if your machines, if your network is DHCP, your IP addresses will churn. So that means that the actual address of the miner on your network may not align with the IP address of the pool. And that's historically a tricky problem to solve. So people would remedy that with static IPs, but that adds a lot of operator overhead. We give you some patterns that you can use when you configure your miners to bring unique aspects into those fields. So what I'm gonna do instead of using IP address, which could change over time, I'm actually gonna use the MAC address. So the hardware identifier associated with that machine. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's say I've got this new idea and I'm gonna go ahead and reconfigure all of my what's miners to leverage the MAC address instead. So I'm gonna do a filter top right. I'll do a miner type. We'll do what's miner M31S's. With the filter applied, I'm looking at 1,728 miners. I'm gonna mass configure all of those. So I'll hit bulk edit. I'll check every miner, just like when we were doing LED blinking. And now I'm gonna pick change pools. In this prompt, I can configure which stratums the miners will connect to. So for this example, we're gonna send them off to Foundry. The left side of the dot, again, that's like your kind of account number, who you are. So we're gonna go ahead and make that one foreman. The right side of the dot, that's where people would put IP addresses, but we're gonna instead click right here and we're gonna use one of these variables. So the way that this works is when I go ahead and hit apply, it's gonna reconfigure 1,728 miners and it will substitute this variable in with the actual value from the miner. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this field right here, the MAC address clean. And I'm gonna paste that in. Password, we'll just make it X. I'm not gonna worry about the other three pools, but this is where I would configure a failover. When I hit apply, that minor MAC address clean will get replaced with the actual MAC address from the machine. So now every single miner here, as its IP address changes on the network, it will always have the same unique worker name, the same hardware identifier. The workers page is generally showing you how the devices are configured, and this should match with what you would be seeing on the pool. The workers page is generally just to help you line up what you see on the pool with what you see in Foreman. For reconciliation purposes, we generally recommend that every unique machine has a unique worker name. So that makes it very easy to go into the pool and say, oh, I have 7,000 miners online, and then I can come to Foreman and verify that I also still have 7,000 miners online. So it's easy to match them up one-to-one. -one. If you're in a situation where you happen to have multiple machines sharing the same worker name, it can be very difficult to go to the pool and say, well, I can see I have one worker with a large amount of hash rate. What machines are part of that worker? Maybe we'll just call it, you know, container one. So what machines are in container one? I can't really see what's offline from the pool's perspective. So then you would come into Foreman and you would go to the workers page and that is where you would see active miners here. That would not be one. So that might be 10 or 20. So you can use Foreman to peel apart that worker name and actually see what miners are comprising that. So this is how you would further reconcile between the pool and Foreman. But generally that's a situation that we don't recommend that you get in. You usually wanna to try to keep your miners one-to-one, -one, unique worker per machine, so it's easy to line things up with the pool. The last thing I'll say about the workers page is it's generally intended to be informational. So it's a reconciliation tool. And again, it's only for specific minor deployments where you have miners sharing the same worker name. You won't be coming to the workers page to perform any actions against the equipment. So it's just to help you peel apart that poolside view. Mm -hmm.